Hello everyone, I am the Comics Kid 2099. Welcome to another video of me examining the X-Men. Today I am examining X-Men issue 10. We are in the double digits now. Uh, this issue is written by Stan Lee with art by Jack Kirby and Chick Stone and lettering by Sam Rosen. Uh, this issue, the X-Men are doing one of their training exercises and then they realize that Angel is not there so they find him watching the news and they see that there was an explorer in Antarctica who went missing and then he was brought back to safety by a man in a loincloth and a saber-toothed tiger. Uh, the X-Men ask Professor X if he's a mutant. Professor X says no, he's not, but you guys have been cooped up for a while. It might boost your morale if you go and investigate this. So they go to Antarctica. They find out that there is a hidden land beneath uh, the snow and ice of Antarctica uh, where there are dinosaurs and all kinds of things that should be extinct and should have gone extinct thousands of years ago. And uh, the X-Men, uh, they encounter a group of swamp people and then they kidnap Jean Grey so then uh, the rest of the X-Men they have to go and rescue Jean and then Angel gets kidnapped and uh, they meet the guy who uh, brought the other man to safety uh, on the news uh, his name is Kazar uh, I've always pronounced it Kazar but this issue says uh, Kazar uh, K-A-Y dash uh, S-A-R uh, that's how it's pronounced uh, it's spelled just K-A-Z-A-R but it's pronounced Kazar and so anyway uh, Kazar and his pet uh, saber-toothed tiger Zabu uh, they help the X-Men rescue rescue Jean, and then they kind of bring the Swamp People's uh, temple uh, down uh, around them. Uh, they were about to be uh, sacrificed to a large Tyrannosaurus Rex, but the X-Men and Kazar save the day, and then Kazar uh, kind of rudely tells the X-Men, uh, go back to your world. That's your world. This is my world, and don't ever come back. And then uh, when they go back up the tunnel that leads back up to uh, the rest of Antarctica, uh, Kazar, he uh, closes in the tunnel uh, with his uh, woolly mammoths that are under his control. And uh, that's the issue. Uh, this issue, more than any other that we've had in this series so far, really feels like it was more driven by what Jack Kirby wanted to do and less by what Stan Lee wanted to do. Uh, I feel like there is a collaboration between the two of them uh, in these issues and in other issues in other series, uh, but this one more than any other in this series, I feel like it's driven more by Jack Kirby saying, I really want to draw uh, some Conan the Barbarian type uh, stuff and some dinosaurs. Can we please do that? And Stan Lee saying, sure, yeah, let's do that. Um, Kazar is actually a character from the Golden Age of Marvel Comics. Uh, for a long time, I thought that he was an X-Men character, kind of an ancillary character who uh, was introduced in the X-Men comics, but then kind of went his own way and was just a part of the Marvel Universe in the same way that uh, Dazzler, for example, was. But no, he was a character uh, introduced in the 1940s. And uh, later on, I believe that uh, other writers uh, implied that this is a different Kazar than the one in the 40s. In the 40s, his name was, uh, I think, uh, David something. And then uh, this case are, his name is Kevin Plunder. Uh, we don't find that out here, uh, but later on, uh, I'm not even sure if it's in an X-Men comic, but later on in the 60s, uh, his name is revealed. I know that Kazar later showed up in Daredevil, uh, in some issues also drawn by Jack Kirby. Uh, but in this issue, as far as anyone is concerned, this could be the same Kazar from the 1940s. Uh, maybe, maybe not, uh, because I'm not sure if there was anything to specifically set those Golden Age issues in the 1940s. Uh, they could have been set uh, around the same time that this X-Men issue is set, for all we know. Uh, but uh, I haven't read any of those Golden Age issues, but I thought it was interesting that they were bringing back a character who was basically Tarzan and everything but name only. And uh, we know that Stan Lee, he was uh, inspired by a lot of uh, pulp stories uh, from uh, his youth, and uh, Tarzan would have been one of those that would have been uh, probably still coming out when Stan Lee was younger, uh, just right before he started working at Marvel, or Timely at the time. Uh, so anyway, we know that Tarzan was probably a big influence on Stan Lee whenever he started writing at Marvel, and so uh, it makes sense that he would want to uh, bring back Kazar uh, if Jack Kirby wanted to do a uh, kind of almost a sword and sorcery, sword and sandal type story uh, for one issue of X-Men. Uh, but uh, there's not a whole lot really to talk about here. I do feel like there might be some shades of racism here uh, because the bad guys who kidnap Jean and are going to sacrifice her to a large dinosaur, they are all, seemingly they're all black. Uh, in the coloring of um, the Essential book that I was reading this issue from, uh, all the uh, Swamp People, they look like they're darker skin colored than uh, the rest of the X-Men. So I'm not sure if the implication is that they are black or if that was just how this particular printing was colored. Uh, I'm not sure. For all I know, if you go and read a uh, color version of this comic, they may all uh, have lighter skin color. I'm not sure, uh, but 
it seems like they're kind of implying like, oh, those savages over there, uh, they want to kill us and sacrifice us to a dinosaur. And then when they're all black, the implication there, it's not great. Uh, now, there is some shades of truth to that in the real world. Uh, I've heard stories about missionaries who go to some country that is not uh, as technologically caught up uh, with us as uh, everywhere else in the world. And then missionaries will get killed uh, by the natives there. So there is some kind of truth to that. But at the same time, I feel like this could have been a little less uh, racially insensitive. I think the swamp people here, uh, if they had all been white guys, I don't think that it would have been an issue at all. Uh, but having them all have darker skin color uh, than Kazar and the rest of the X-Men certainly makes it seem like uh, those people over there are brown and they're savage and they're evil and they're going to try and feed you to a T-Rex. But Kazar is white and he's good and he's noble and he's going to help us rescue Jean. Uh, it's a little problematic. It's very problematic. And I don't even know if that was necessarily intentional. Uh, with Kazar being uh, living in the Savage Land, and there were, uh, now that I think of it, uh, there was at least one guy here who was not black. So maybe they weren't all black, but there was one panel uh, where several of them looked like they had darker skin color. Uh, so maybe that was just in one panel. I don't even know. Uh, but uh, if I look on uh, Google Images and look for different pictures from this issue, I may find out that uh, they weren't intended to be uh, black or brown, and that uh, that was just for one panel in this book. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I uh, I know that later on, uh, Kazar's origin story is going to reveal that Kazar is not actually a native to the Savage Land. And so I'm not really sure at this time if they intended for everyone in the Savage Land to have darker skin than Kazar. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but that's something that uh, it'll be interesting to see. And as far as I know, we're not going to get another appearance of Kazar or the Savage Land in the X-Men for a while. It's going to be around X-Men issue 100 or so uh, before we see the Savage Land again in the X-Men comics. And the next time we see Kazar in X-Men, uh, he is going to have much more of an expansive vocabulary. Here, uh, he was pretty much talking like uh, you would expect the Hulk to talk about, or uh, like you would expect Tarzan to talk about in like one of the early Tarzan stories, like Me, Tarzan, You, Jane. Uh, he's talking a lot like that. He'll say, uh, I am Kazar. And then that was about all that he would say. And then he would say, uh, Surface World, your home. Uh, jungle, my home. Like He, he doesn't talk uh, in complete sentences. And I'm pretty sure that he will talk in more complete sentences the next time that we see him in the X-Men comics. But uh, he has several more appearances in the Silver Age before we will see him again in the X-Men comics. Uh, so that's about all that I have to say here. We did get to see uh, more development that uh, both Jean Grey and Scott Summers have a thing for each other, uh, but they are too afraid to admit their feelings for one another. Uh, Scott still is hanging on to the fact that uh, now that he is team leader, uh, he can't uh, have any romantic fraternization with one of his teammates. And Jean, uh, I really don't know why she refuses to reveal her feelings to him. Uh, but both of them are uh, thinking about their feelings for one another in this issue. Uh, also, uh, Angel and Jean, when they're both tied up and about to be fed to the T-Rex, uh, Angel is uh, very much risking his life to save her. And you could read that as he would do that for any of his teammates. But we have seen in a couple of issues that Angel does have a thing for Jean, but that's unrequited. She does not feel the same way towards him. And then uh, when the X-Men are able to rescue Jean and Angel, uh, Scott is like, Jean, you're alive. Thank goodness. And Angel's like, uh, I'm alive too, Scott. Uh, do you care about me at all? And so uh, you can see a little bit of jealousy there. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I like to think that Angel is enough of a grown-up that he understands that uh, Scott has a thing for Gene, Gene has a thing for Scott, and there's not really anything he can do about it. But uh, we will see more complications in that love triangle uh, in the series later on. Uh, but that's about all that we get as far as like any lingering subplots uh, in this series. Uh, this is another issue that does not have the Brotherhood as the antagonist. Uh, we will see the Brotherhood again next issue, though. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on X-Men issue 10. Uh, consider this issue examined.